Painfully, Arsenal have become winners. And set it back for Calafiori! Oh, oh it's a beauty! They are currently demonstrating every single attribute that you need to be considered winners. We have seen their development over the past three seasons and in their valiant two-all draw against Manchester City away from home, we saw a glint in their eye. A rugged determination, the purpose, an ability to do anything that it takes to win the game. To do anything that it takes to win the league. Now, personally speaking, I only see this approach as a positive thing. I believe that Arteta and those players deserve nothing but praise for adopting that ideology. Be winners. Do anything that it takes to win. Go for the jugular in every single situation. Be snide. Bend the rules, be in the ref's ear, stay down, use your elbows and tip the balance in your team's favour. In football, I believe a Machiavellian approach to the game is a positive thing. I think Sergio Ramos is a great example of a player that adopted that mentality. Managerially, Jose Mourinho is about as Machiavellian as they get, but it's now getting to the stage where I wonder if Mikel Arteta could be seen in a similar vein. And if he could, as I say, I see that as a compliment, I see it as a positive. But I'm interested to hear from Arsenal fans here because Arsenal fans in the past have been very snide about such a mentality. I'm a Chelsea fan. I'm supposed to think like this. But Arsenal fans, from my experience, see themselves as being a little bit better. Like I can't tell you how many Arsenal fans I have in my life. I grew up in a part of London called Kilburn, which is northwest London, which is a majority Arsenal area. Loads of members of my family are Arsenal season ticket holders. The football team that I play for are 90% Arsenal fans. And all of that information will go some way to helping explain why I reacted to John Stones' equaliser like this. Away! Yes! Yes! But those same Arsenal fans would often suggest to me that Arsenal were bigger than Chelsea, better than Chelsea, more prestigious than Chelsea, partly because of how they see the game. They would sneer at our win at all costs attitude. Parking the bus, anti-football, zero ambition, boring and negative. They were all regular terms in the lexicon of Arsenal fans to describe other sides who got the better of them under Arsene Wenger, particularly Jose Mourinho's Chelsea. But interestingly, they are also the terms that have been used recently to describe Mikel Arteta's performance against Manchester City away. Now, just before we go any further, could you please do me a quick favour? Please do click that subscriber button. It helps me out massively and it would be my honour to welcome you into this community. Please click it right now. If you are watching this video and you haven't subscribed, just click that button. Helps me out no end. Nice one. So I think the question is, under Arteta, have Arsenal become everything that they used to proclaim to hate? Like in the barren last decade of Arsene Wenger's reign at Highbury and then the Emirates, Arsenal fans and their manager would often profess to be above the tactics that were on display from opposition football teams. Those same tactics would win other teams' football matches, but Arsenal would rise above them. For example, when Mourinho's Chelsea came to the Emirates as champions-elect in 2015, we got a nil-nil draw that was so valuable. It put us on the precipice of a fourth title since the last time that Arsenal had won the league. Look at this photo. This is my reaction to a nil-nil draw at Highbury. Highbury. What's it called, Emirates? <laughs> Ecstatic. Over the moon, delighted, nil, nil, anti-football. And Arsenal fans derided me for this reaction. However, whilst I was celebrating, the Emirates rocked into action. Boring, boring Chelsea, loud and clear. Arsenal fans furious at Chelsea's negative tactics that day and they let Jose Mourinho and us, as Chelsea fans know, Boring, boring Chelsea was the cry. As if somehow our title counted less. As if it would go down in history as less worthwhile. Because first and foremost, we were defensively solid. And we had a coach who could be tactically pragmatic depending on the opposition. First and foremost, we were defensively solid. And we had a coach who could be tactically pragmatic depending on the opposition. That's completely interchangeable, isn't it? I was describing and complimenting Jose Mourinho there, but those words are applicable to Mikel Arteta. On forums, in phone-ins on the radio, in fanzines, on fan cams, Arsenal fans would routinely claim that they didn't care if Mourinho's football was successful. Arsenal had a specific culture that demanded a different kind of game was played. A blog on an Arsenal fan website when talking about Jose Mourinho said this, Jose Mourinho's Chelsea were masters of setting up to get a one-off result. For over two decades, that hasn't been in our DNA, nor should it be. Arsenal are a club who have values of playing the game in the right way. The song that their fans still sing every game to this day about going unbeaten for 49 league games in a row. Think of the wording of that song. What are the lyrics? The culmination of the song is playing football the Arsenal way. The self mythology built around the Arsenal way. It felt for them that football was not just a sport built on winning and losing. It was a sport of right and wrong, 
Good and bad. Evil versus righteous. Arsenal were the good in this analogy. And what made them good and right was free-flowing, attacking, expansive, passing football. Evil in the analogy was Chelsea. Pragmatic, solid, defensive, anti-football, but ultimately champions. However, in Mikel Arteta, it does feel that Arsenal now have a coach who is far more indebted to the pragmatism of Jose Mourinho than the passing football of their hero, Arsene Wenger. Arteta recently praised Jose Mourinho for all to hear. He said that Mourinho has been more than an influence on his career. And to his credit, Arsenal have now kept nine clean sheets in 11 away league games this calendar year. And they have become the kind of side defensively, the man who was so often their antagonist. Mr. Jose Mourinho himself built title winning teams on. Declan Rice is the exact kind of midfielder that Jose Mourinho would have built a team around. Leandro Trossard feels like the type of selfless, hardworking and efficient forward that Mourinho valued so highly. If you think about Willian, Pedro, Oscar's contribution to Jose Mourinho's Chelsea, I think it's very comparable to what Leandro Trossard is asked to do for Mikel Arteta. And it's now Arsenal who are rubbing the football purists up the wrong way. Bernardo Silva was speaking about Arsenal when he said these words. There was only one team that came to play football. It just feels like like a carbon copy of the exact complaint that Arsene Wenger would have had about Jose Mourinho just over a decade ago. The important thing to remember here is that Arsenal and Mikel Arteta are completely right. Bernardo Silva is wrong. Bernardo Silva's opinion on this means nothing. Manchester City do not have a God-given right to play against opposition in the way that they would like the opposition to play. Arsenal have no responsibility, moral or otherwise, to play in a particular system. And the complaints from Bernardo Silva or anyone else involved at Manchester City are meaningless. Just as Arsene Wenger's complaints that long throw-ins were unjust on technically superior teams. God, do you remember that? That was the glory era of football, wasn't it? And in that game, Arsenal's defence were undone by two long throw-ins from Rory De Lapp against Stoke. And Wenger spoke after the game. He said it was unjust because he didn't have a version of De Lapp. And he tried to argue that kick-ins would have been better. At that point, I argued that Arsene Wenger was rattled. And at this point, I argued that Manchester City are. And therefore, Mikel Arteta is doing his job to perfection. But I wonder how Arsenal fans feel about this. Not normal Arsenal fans. Not Arsenal fans who are loving what they are witnessing under Mikel Arteta. But you know that smug, footballing purist who drinks coffee in the Gales by Finsbury Park and wears Crocs to the Emirates? I wonder how he feels about the fact that Arsenal had 12% possession in the second half against Man City. Or that Kai Havertz became the first outfield player not to complete a single pass in 90 minutes in Premier League history. My opinions on this doesn't matter at all. My honest opinion, I thought Julian Timber, who occupied the same stat, could easily have been man of the match. I thought Kai Havertz had an excellent game. Those things don't matter. XG stats don't matter. Football possession stats don't matter. Football hipsters will pretend they do, but they don't. All that matters is securing the points that you need. And Arsenal was sensational at the Etihad and Arteta got his tactics spot on. I think you could easily argue that one of the best 45 minutes in the Arteta reign is what happened in the second half at the Etihad the other day. He got it so right. He was perfect. His team carried out his instructions to a T. And what were they? They were winners. They were gladiatorial. They were fighters. They were everything that fans want to see from the stands. They got under Guardiola's skin. And the best way for them to come away with anything, having gone down to 10 men, was to do exactly what Arteta did pragmatism. And I will always love that. But my team hasn't spent a quarter of a century claiming a certain style of play is central to our identity and inherently better than other styles of football, even if it doesn't win. If they win the league this season, I am sure that Arsenal fans won't care. Football fans, after all, are notoriously fickle. I think the majority of their fans have already embraced it, given the reaction to the City game. But if this reaction has proven one thing, it's that when clubs claim they have a tradition, a style of play, an outlook that must be adhered to, and a footballing identity. It's mostly nonsense. They're only opposed to the opposite until it proves to be more successful for them. But it is quite funny, watching some Arsenal fans that I know, some Arsenal fans that are friends, some Arsenal fans that I am related to, embracing the traditions that they once sneered at, loving what they once condemned, and adopting the very attitudes that they were once above. As under Arteta, Arsenal have definitely become a little bit of what they once hated. Thank you for watching this video. I found it really interesting to make. Uh, please do let me know. If you're an Arsenal fan especially, can you comment below and let me know what you think about the points raised? Really interested to hear your thoughts. Really appreciate you taking the time out to watch this video. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a like. Please click subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon.